In this video, we're going to take a closer look at the items under the Tools menu. Device Editor edits a database used by the compiler to control the compilation. CCS maintains this database, which is the devices.dat file. However, users may want to add new devices or change the entries for a device for a special application. Be aware that if the database is changed and then the compiler is updated, the changes to devices.dat file will be lost. To prevent this, save a copy of your devices.dat file before an update. Click on a chip name to view the chip details. To add a new chip, find a similar chip and then click on the copy button. To delete an entry, click on the delete button. Click on rename to rename the part number for this entry. Save changes to the database using the save button. Opcode specifies the chip family type. IO port specifies the available IO ports and pins on the device. You can expand sections in the middle table to see more options that you can edit. Click on a value to edit it. The fuses available for the chip are listed in the box on the top right side. Erratas lists the various possible erratas and checks the applicable ones. Interrupts lists all the peripheral interrupts available for the chip. Device Selector uses the device database to allow a parametric selection of devices. Fill out the criteria on the left side to display the matching devices. If you believe that the results need to be refreshed, click on the Refresh button. Results can be printed using the Print button. To edit a device, select the device and then click on the Edit button. That will bring you to the MCU Parts tab, which is the device editor. Click on the Selection Tool tab to be brought back to the device selector. Selecting a device and clicking on Price will bring you to a website, like digiki.com, where you can look for prices. File Compare is for comparing two files. Select the first file. The file type selection will automatically change to match the file type that you selected. If there are past versions of the file saved to the project, then the second file will automatically be changed to the most recent history file. If a source file or text file is being compared, then a line-by-line -line comparison will take place and you have the option to ignore case, white spaces, and blank lines. If a list file is being compared, then you have the option to ignore ROM and RAM addresses to make the comparison more meaningful. For example, if an ASM line was added at the beginning of the program, then a normal comparison would flag every line as different. If the ROM address is ignored, then only the extra line would be flagged. Base Converter is a conversion tool for converting between decimal, hex, and float. Click on the first top left button to add or remove a format shown in the table. The second button is for pinning the pop-up to a corner. The disassembler tool will take as input a hex file and will output ASM. The ASM may be in a form that can be used as inline ASM. The options allow the selection of the assembly format. Data to C is where you can convert any file to a valid C data structure. This is useful for embedding any file into your C source. As an example, a BMP image file can be converted to a C constant array. The output file is where the C will be saved. As another example, you can save a spreadsheet with key constants as a text CSV file and then use this tool to convert the data into an array that can be used in your program. Serial Monitor is an easy-to-use tool for connecting to a serial port. This tool is convenient for communicating with a target program over an RS-232 link. Data is shown as ASCII characters and as raw hex. This tool is included in the IDE software. Command line compiler customers can purchase the software separately on the ccsinfo.com website. File is where you can load and save settings, save data to a file, and enable logging. Edit is where you can copy and paste data. View lets you control what you see. Click on the buttons in the input and output section to change what you see in the area below. 
Columns will let you set the number of columns that you see. Display has the font and display settings. Data graph is for seeing a graph of the data. The data can be exported to a CSV file. Let's look at a better example that shows a graph being created. In this example, the data will go up or down depending upon if the potentiometer on the board is being turned up or down. Configuration is where you can manage the settings for the communication port and logging. Port options will let you connect to a serial COM port or Telnet port. Macros can be managed in the Macro Manager. You can set the log file name in the logging options. Code Profile lets you profile a program while it is running. Unlike in-circuit debugging, this tool grabs information while the program is running and provides statistics, logging, and tracing of its execution. This is accomplished by using a simple communication method between the processor and the ICD with minimal side effects to the timing and execution of the program. In order to use this tool, the program written to the microcontroller needs to have Code Profile support enabled. At the very minimum, this is done with the pound use profile command. Let's look at a better code profile example that will show more data. The run button will start the program and begin logging code profile information. Statistics will show the timing statistics of all the functions being executed. Data messages will display all of the messages sent by the code profile's profile out function. The call sequence can be seen here. Settings is where you can configure the code profiler. The stop button will halt execution of the program. Exit will close the code profile tool. Interface Designer is a graphical user interface, or GUI, that simplifies creating projects for a touch display. The GUI works by allowing the user to create visuals that will be displayed on a touch display without having to program the necessary C code. Start by creating a new project. Go to the Window tab and add a new window to the project. To add an image to the project, click on the Image tab and then the first Import button. Navigate to where the compiler is installed. Double-click on the Interface Designer folder, User Data, Library, and Images. This is where you can find the images that come with Interface Designer. There is a pinned area on the left side that shows the images included in the project. There is another pinned area for the windows. Double-click on a window to open it. Go to the Window tab and click on the Add button to add an image to the window. Double-click on the image to add it. Click and drag on the image to move it. The image can also be moved by hovering over the window images area pinned on the right side and clicking on the up and down arrows next to X and Y in the image property section. Click on apply or cancel to keep or cancel the changes. For more information about how to use the interface designer program, click on the help icon and then contents. CCS Load is the programmer control software. It supports all CCS programmers and debuggers. CCS Load features a Windows user interface with extensive diagnostics, serialization, and security options. The device's window is where you can program and read the chip. The buttons at the bottom of the screen are Write to Chip, Read from Chip, Erase Chip, Verify Chip Blank, Verify Chip Equals File, Run Target Program, and check some chip. Let's try writing to the chip.
Click on the arrow next to options to see more options. The file window is for reviewing and editing hex file contents. The Diagnostics window is where you can diagnose hardware and hook up problems. The Production window is a one-click programming interface. The User window is for making a customized user interface. Visit ccsinfo.com for more information about the easy-to-use CCSC compiler IDE and for purchasing options.